ECNs. So ECNs is a big topic. I know a lot of people have processes. Some of them are manual and not inside of their vault. And I want to show one way that you can kind of implement an ECN or an, or an ECO type of process. You know, for the, for the sake of simplicity here, I'm going to use those two terms interchangeably. Okay? Don't, don't try to gig me on the difference between ECN and ECO. I'm using them interchangeably uh, at the moment. So let's say, let's get a little bit of, of context here. Let's say that we've got our, our 4240 spreader, this little hydraulic spreader. And this is already an approved type of assembly. And what we want to do is we want to make a change. Maybe we've had like a failure in the field. Hopefully it's not something that uh, significant. You know, hopefully you've identified this by using uh, and, and proved it out virtually using uh, simulation. And, and thoroughly vetted all of this. But let's just say we had a failure just for storytelling here. And we want to come back in and do a redesign. And we want to thicken up the arm of that spreader. And we want to replace one of those pins. Okay, That's just the, the storytelling part of this. So maybe I'm a, a manager or I'm somebody in quality control. And I want to make an ECO, an engineering change order. Again, I'm using ECN and ECO kind of interchangeably. Again, don't gig me on it. So I'm going to right click, go to new, and when I can templatize the ECO creation process. So I'm just going to say create ECO. It can give it, uh, the system can give it a sequential number. So I don't have to worry about the naming or having duplicates or anything like that. I can jam in whatever description I want, you know, 4240 spreader. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to copy some of this information over uh, just to spare you guys the agony of watching me type. So these keywords, these can be searchable if you wanted to, to plug in any type of, of keywords. Uh, and then, of course, we could also put in a detailed description if we wanted. So all of this information can be captured right up front during the creation of the actual document. You know, we can say whether or not we want to scrap existing inventory, whether or not we want to use inventory. Again, this, this is very customizable types of stuff here. And I'll just go ahead and open up the file. And PDM Pro is like super well integrated with Explorer and Microsoft products. So we can actually do all of our PDM stuff directly from, uh, from Microsoft Word. But you can see how the information is getting pushed into uh, these fields. So like the information I plugged in whenever I was generating the document, all of that gets uh, placed in. And I could, I could put my information here as far as like what the part numbers that it's affecting. Um, I'm not going to do that right now just because it's going to be really boring to watch that. So I'm just going to check it in. And you can have your own workflows set up with, for these you know, ECOs uh, to where they're, they're a different type of workflow from your, your CAD data. So here I'm going to showcase that I can assign this ECO so I'm just going to push this to like one of my underlings. I'm I'm logged in as a manager right now, so <laughs> I'm going to push this to one of the one of my underlings over here to do the actual grunt work. Uh, so I can say something like ECO assigned, and then I can make a notification comment like, "Hey Jared, uh, do this work and let me know when you're done." Again, PDM professional. A lot of you probably already know this. You can link it to your uh, emails. So you can have that notification. If I tick that box, that can email the individual to where they know for a fact that they have to work on this. They can't play dumb. So I'm going to say <laughs> change state and, uh, and run this through. So now this ECO has been assigned. All right. Let's say uh, I'm a manager, right? I'll, I'll kind of showcase one more thing. Let's say I'm a manager or maybe somebody from quality or maybe operations, and I want to see some of the ECOs that are in process. You can actually save a favorite type of search that'll pull up all of the in process ECOs. So this could be done as kind of like a little report that you want to check maybe every morning just to see what the heck's going on and what kind of changes are coming your way. So you can see all of this um, you know, directly inside of your, your PDM. So I want to showcase a couple more things here. Uh, let's say that I'm the actual person that's making the changes to this uh, to this assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab the assemblies that I want to make a change to. 
I'm going to say a change state and like request a change. I'm only going to change the files that I need, so like the top level assembly and the ARM itself. You know, you can even say per ECO 0006 if you wanted to. But the cool thing that I want to showcase here is the capability to copy these files and then paste them as a reference into the ECO. So I'm going to paste this stuff as a reference and then check this into the vault again. And the cool thing that's going on, let's just imagine that I did the changes and did the work already. But the cool thing that you can do now is if you can go to your contains tab of the ECO and you can see the files that were affected. And I just think this is super useful stuff to be able to have that level of integration where you can see, okay, I can go to my assembly and see the ECOs, the list of ECOs and changes, you know, and document numbers that, that needed to... Uh, that needed to be made to, to change these files over the course of time. So this is really, really well integrated. <laughs> I just think it's so cool and, and well traceable. The other really thing that I really like about this is that you can even run your approval and approve all of this in the same motion if you set it up that way. So I can right click my ECO, go to change state, and then submit the change for approval. And notice what's coming in. I'm picking up on these, uh, the assembly as well as the ARM file. Right? I can type in whatever approval comments or notifications that I want, run through, and then I can even do the final approval this way as well and say the change is approved. And that's going to approve the ECO as well as the files themselves. Again, if you set it up like that, if you're comfortable and that's your process. And we'll go ahead and approve these. So now my ECO is complete. And I've got a link between the ECO document and any of the files that were affected by it. And the other cool thing that's going on here is my ECO is getting updated automatically. I can see who actually approved this and the approval date. And that's, you know, all getting captured here pretty readily. <laughs>